Do you like retro games and you want a near infinite set of free games out there to have like this beautiful Oregon Trail? Well then sit down, buckle up, and check out this. So, first things first, before we start, I gotta tell you we're gonna be using DOSBox and we're gonna be using VMs. Now, if you don't use DOSBox and VMs for abandonware, there is a chance that you could get a Trojan. There could, some malware can be packaged inside of it. Now, most abandonware doesn't get, have malware inside of it. They're just enthusiasts. They're trying to preserve the games over time. But you should be careful. If you use a VM, you're ensured that you're not going to break anything. And then DOSBox should mitigate pretty much everything because it's entirely walled off. But you'll have to be careful with the way that you download files. So, now that that's out of the way, let's dive into abandonware. Uh, the link for this site is going to be down in the description, so you can check it out, and you can check out all my links in here. These are honorable mentions, because if you click them, you can just uh, kind of play the games inside of here, right? So if you want to play Lemmings, you can scroll down in here, and you can just click Play Online, and it'll actually load it up, and you can play it directly in the browser, which is really cool. But these are my top Abandonware sites that I find stuff at. So you've got My Abandonware. It'll link to you the seller if there's a place to buy it. Uh, but all of these are great ones. I'm going to let you peruse them at your own time. They all just will let you download different DOS games. They're usually going to be in zip format, which you'll then have to extract. And then you can play them inside of DOSBox. So DOSBox, that's really what we're trying to get in here. Uh, we want to understand how DOSBox works. So go ahead and download it. It's got a manual, but let's cover just the absolute basics. So these are the commands you're going to have to know in order to run DOSBox. Mount. If you don't run mount, DOSBox isn't going to work because it does not have access to your hard drive. So mount just says, hey, tell me what folder I'm allowed to touch. And then once you've mounted that, you're going to mount it as your C drive. And then if you try in C colon, you'll switch to that drive. And then DIR, that stands for directory, and it lists what is in the current directory so that you can see your files. And CD is change directory, so you can go into a subfolder. And then running something exe just runs the program. All right, so that's all the commands you really need to know to run DOSBox. So let's dive into DOSBox uh, right now. Let's launch it. So you'll see it'll come up by default and it'll be in the Z directory. What you need to do is you need to run mount C. So we're going to give it a C drive. And then you have to give it some folder on your hard drive that actually exists. I store all my games just in the root directory of C under a folder called DOS. So we're going to mount it there. So that's mounted, but you're still in the D drive. So you got to switch to the C drive. Now that you're in the C drive, you can just hit DIR to see, hey, what's in here? And you'll see that I have three games installed into that folder. So in my DOS folder, I just keep whatever games I'm currently playing in there. And I don't keep them all in there because then that gets a little bit too crazy, a little bit too hard to organize. So I just put a few in there, I extract them, and then they're there. So let's go into Oregon Trail, we'll do CD, which means change directory, into Oregon. And then this tilde one, this comes from old MS-DOS, where file names could only be eight characters long, so it had to truncate it, even though if you look at it in Windows, you would see that that file is actually, let me pull it up here. So if we pull up the folder here, we've got Oregon Trail, right? But you can only see tilde one because the name is too long. So you have to do CD into Oregon tilde one. And then once you're inside of here, you can do DIR, but there's a lot of files. That's a little confusing. So let's do DIR and we're going to do programmers call that splat or star. It's a the asterisk.exe. And this just says, hey, show me everything that looks like star.exe. Star is the wild card. So we show it and now we just see the exes. So there's an install and there's Oregon. Well, let's just try to run it. You can either run Oregon just well, you can run oregon.exe, because that's the file extension, or you can just run Oregon, and it'll assume that it's trying to do an executable, which will be the exe. And that runs, and once it gets going, the game's underway, and you can play Oregon Trail just like you would normally, right? You say, hey, I want to play. And now this is definitely DOS, right? You've got to type in commands like yes and no, and you have to type one, enter, a whole bunch of things like that in order to play, right? And give your character a name, something like that. So that's how you can play that game. Let's close DOSBox now that we're not using that. So that is the number one way to play Abandonware games. So if you go to all these places, the vast majority of these games are going to be DOS titles. And DOS titles, uh, they run excellently inside of DOSBox. If something's running wrong, if it's too slow or too fast, you can go into the manual and you can learn ways to slow things down, speed things up, set configuration. You can even find config files online for specific games for DOSBox to make it run in the best way possible. All right, now let's touch on virtual machines. So if you're on one of these sites, not all of this stuff is going to be DOS, right? A lot of it is. But if you, you know, let's pull out one of these ones that doesn't have DOS in the name, right? Like Abandonware. 
And if you scroll down here, you're going to see, look, this one's for Windows, and it was made in 2004. Windows 2006, Windows 2009. These ones are not going to run inside of DOSBox. So you're going to need to use a VM. Uh, let's go back to our site here. Now, I am only just barely going to touch on what you can do with VMs, because VMs are a complex topic, OK? So you will need to learn a lot more if you want to do more things. The basics are that you're going to need to run an operating system, and that operating system will probably either need to be Windows 98 or Windows XP. And why those two? Well, Windows 98 can basically run anything that Windows 95 can, because it's built on top of DOS, and so it has the same shared architecture. Whereas Windows 95, you're going to have some color issues. So almost always, you're going to go with Windows 98 for anything that's old enough that it needs DOS as its underpinning. But if you want something that's just going to run as uh, in a Windows machine that doesn't use DOS, you're probably going to go on to go with Windows XP for abandonware. So to get those operating systems, uh, there's a few ways you could go. But on archive.org, if we let's just click on this guy. So if you search on archive.org for Windows VirtualBox or Windows VM, things like that, you can find operating systems for Windows 95 or Windows XP, whatever you need. Uh, and then you'll have to provide it with your own key. So that's a good way to be able to jump in and get the uh, media you need for them. But how do you run a virtual machine? Well, that's where you're going to need one of these pieces of software. So it, this is not an exhaustive list, but these are kind of the top level pieces of software that most people use to run VMs. So you've got Citrix Hypervisor, which was also called Zen Server. If you see a file that ends in XVA, it's one of these VMs, right? Uh, Chemu is a little bit different because it uses OVA and OVF, but that stands for Open Virtualization Appliance and Format, which means that these files can actually port to these other tools, which is very useful. Uh, VirtualBox itself uses VDI, so if you ever see one of those, those are pretty common. Uh, you'll know that you're needing to run that inside of VirtualBox, which you can get from Oracle. Again, it's free for personal use. Uh, if you're going to use it for business use, that's different. And then VMware, this one's maybe a little bit more complicated, but it's also kind of an industry standard, and so if you're wanting to get into VMs also to further your career, this might be a good way for you to go, and if you see these files, you know you'll need to get into VMware. So. That is the very basics. There is one more type of file, which is called an ISO file. And if you see an ISO file, uh, that's an image. And it's usually going to be like a CD or a floppy disk image. And that can either be installation media for an operating system, or it could be installation medium for like the game itself, right? So once you're running a VM, a lot of times you will need to insert, quote unquote, into the virtual drive an ISO so that it has the CD, right? So imagine you're going to play Age of Empires, let's say, right? You would have had the disk back in the day. You would have popped it in your CD tray, and then you would have played it directly off of the disk in Windows XP. Now you're going to run a VM with Windows XP. You're going to insert the ISO into the virtual drive so that it says, ah, there's a CD available to me. And then you're going to you know, just go to my computer, go to the virtual drive like you normally would and click on the CD and you can run again Age of Empires or whatever game it is right off of the CD. So hopefully this helps. It's not an exhaustive lift list, uh, but it at least lets you know where you can search to find more information, right? So if you're just trying to run DOSBox, you can do that easy peasy. If you want to do uh, some of these Windows games that are a little bit more complex, you're going to have to run a virtual machine. But once you've done that, you have all of these sites with just tons and tons of titles, hundreds if not thousands of abandonware titles that you can enjoy and play today. So, I've been Cine Placebo. I hope you enjoy some of these retro games. Go out and play you one. Catch you later.